so happy we alive. Good evening, and welcome to Louisville Late Night. This evening we're in beautiful San Francisco, California. And you, you've never read a speech that he gave at the hearings in front of Anslinger and all. Well worth the read. It's very prophetic. It fits what's happening today. <coughs> you come a little bit further, further into the timeline, you have the 1950s and the beatniks. The beatniks are kind of peripheral to a lot of my research, so I don't talk about them a lot. But you might remember Paul Krasner. He, he comes in that time period in the late 50s with the realist. Uh, publication that he did, the Beatnik publication. Also, Ken Casey, you might remember. Uh, Casey, Ken, yeah, another guy. So yeah, that's enough for that time period. But uh, <coughs> our movement, as we know today, really started in the 60s. And the first uh, instance that we have is Lee Mar, Lee, L E dash M A R, L E M A R, Lee Mar, started by Lowell Egelmeyer, uh, right here in San Fran, back in 1964. Really. Lemar grew quickly, and a, a guy I haven't really I've got to study a lot, but I keep I, I, things kind of crystallize, and I keep seeing Ed Sanders, Ed Sanders, Ed Sanders. I, I'm sure I'll see a lot more of him, but the Fugs, Ed Sanders in New York uh, picked up the, uh, the the call, and uh, Lemar spread into that area of the country where it picked up someone that you've heard from already, Michael Aldrich. Michael Aldrich helped uh, after being crowned the you know, the king of pot and the new PhD of marijuana, the only one in the country. Uh, he, everybody just <coughs> clustered around him. And uh, you know, a lot of things uh, happened with Michael Aldrich. You'll hear a lot about him while going through the timeline. <coughs> if you uh, go to the next slide, there should be, um, just go to the next, not the next, but the next one after that. Let's see what we got. Next one after that. That's the Park Davis Flyer. The Park Davis Flyer is going to be in this coming O'Shaughnessy's. Dr. McCree has asked me to put it in O'Shaughnessy's uh, and release it there, so that's what I did. Um, this is some of the information that was released by Lee Mar. Now, you got to give these guys you know, more than just credit as activists. They dredged out obscure history about marijuana and put it back in the lexicon. This is the LaGuardia Commission on Marijuana. <coughs> LaGuardia, the mayor of New York, was a, an unlikely activist. He was pretty fair and objective, took Anslinger's results, and tested them himself because he had, you know, the New York uh, hospitals and stuff, and found everything was wrong. LaGuardia was said. fake. My mother remembered that him for the fact that he always read the Sunday Funnies Yes, he did. He would, read the, he would read my the mother, Sunday Funnies on the radio. My mother loved it. All right, so but he was a real people person, a real fantastic guy, and they loved him. But the LaGuardia Commission Report on Marijuana was one of the many, many things that the uh, uh, Lemar reprinted and brought back. It's a basis for all the work that we do today, is this knowledge base that was dredged out of obscurity by Dr. Aldrich and his, and his uh, pre pre predecessors. <coughs> okay, 1964 also, uh, a side note, Dr. Meshulam and his team in Israel discovered THC. Before then, they thought it was a you know, something else, an alkaloid or something. They were all we're on the wrong track. In 1964, the Fitzhugh Ludlow Library came into full swing in, in San Francisco. Fitzhugh Ludlow Library also picked up the mantle of distributing information. Go to the next slide. Um, in 1968, uh, uh, Andy Weil, uh, published a document, I'll get to this picture if you want to, uh, in, in 1968 uh, Dr. Micarillo was in the Nas National Institutes of Mental Health and was published in Economic Botany. These were the first uh, documentation that showed up on marijuana. Um, the, uh, Andy Weil was published in Science Mag in 1968, and then 1969 Dr. Micarillo uh, published Thinking of Using Pot. 1969, Kaplan, a, a, a professor in Stanford University, came out with this, which is very important, also the report in the Indian Health Commission report, which tied in all this history you heard of before to what we're doing today. Uh, 1969, Timothy Leary got busted with a little baggie of pot as he was hoodwinked into coming back into America from Mexico by the U.S. security, who just totally set him up, and he wound up getting arrested for this little baggie of pot, which wasn't even his, it was someone else's in the car. And he fought, instead of you know, bowing down, he fought. He fought on the, on the terms of the Marijuana Tax Act was self-incriminating. And he actually won. The Marijuana Tax Act was found unconstitutional. And Timothy Leary won, won his case. The reason why <coughs> most people don't know about this is because a year later, the Controlled Substances Act was created, which obscured the, the huge victory. So Timothy Leary is a badass. 
and a great night. Uh, in 1971, there was a phenomenon called uh, John Sinclair. John, <laughs> John Sinclair was a big Lemar guy. Rainbow Coalition, it, everything. I mean, you look at his business card, he had four pages of the business card. And he had been arrested like three times already. And when he got arrested this time for a couple of joints, and they wanted to put him in for 25 or 10 years, I forget the exact amount of years, but a gobs of years, and, and everyone went nuts. So the big, real big shit hits the fan moment was John uh, Lennon came down. He said, go a couple of slides, you'll find a... Um, this what, is good. Let me show you this. What's the date on that? Shush. One second, you have Newsweek, and then this is 1967. Go up a little bit so you can read the, the title. Shush. Go up a little bit. Now move the thing up so you can see the bottom of the page. Yeah, thank you. Marijuana, time to change the law. Now go to the next slide. What's the date on that? September You'll see that. September 7th. Go to the next slide. I don't have time to go into all the dates. Let me tell you after we're over. Now, this is the marijuana pot problem in 67. And then the next one, marijuana time to change the law in 69. So in 67 and 69, the activists changed the debate. Now go to the next slide. Go until you see John Lennon's face. Now I'm going to read something. And this will probably wrap it up. It's one more statement and I'll be done. But this is John, uh, John Sinclair's poem uh, by John Lennon. It ain't fair, John Sinclair, in the stir for breathing air. Won't you care for John Sinclair in the stir for breathing air? Let it be, set it free. Let it be like you and me. John Sinclair was freed three days after the big rally on, the, on a self-initiated motion of the Michigan Supreme Court. That was pretty awesome. Now, one last thing I'll leave you with, and then I'll go. <coughs> we have a debate in the reform movement today of should we work on medical marijuana? Should we work on legalization? Da, da, da. This debate's gone on for a long time. And back in the CMI, you see the first poster to the left of that uh, overhead, there is a CMI poster, I mean, a Morphe poster from that time period. You can look at it later. <coughs> in that time period, there's a big internal debate should we go with you know the free backyard marijuana campaign, or should we go with an alcohol you know, distribution model, state controlled model? We went with the free legal backyard model, and we got a lot of votes on the CMI in '72, the very first big initiative. In fact, we got twice as many as they expected, and it was so many votes that it impressed the Moscone Commission a year or so later to change a law that took it away from a felony, brought it to the law we have today, and set the stage for Prop 215 and other things like that to be passed. So, you know, that's, that's the timeline. That's how the things work. So uh, that's what's happened in the past. I, I hope that you try to learn from it. And uh, you've got a lot more information, obviously, to get to. But uh, come to the museum at cannabismuseum.org. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of stuff. We're basically trying to chronicle every image that's ever been made on cannabis in, on the Internet. So a lot of the people you've talked to and heard from around, the, on, around this uh, conference are involved in this project. It's kind of an omnibus project. Uh, we're hoping to link up with archive.org and etc. So this is a big thing for the whole movement to embrace and be part of. So come on up and introduce yourself if I haven't already met you. So thank you. It looks like it's 12:59. We have time for maybe a question. Yes, Clinton. Have any of you traced how cannabis Come smoking to the microphone first emerged? In the I'm assuming it was. How did cannabis smoking first emerge? Right, well, Native Americans. Well, the Scythians inhaled the smoke, and the uh, and the uh, in, in, Indians knew about it. India Indians. Uh, smoke it. But in the United States, it came from the marijuana cigarettes from Mexico, from what we can tell. And the Scythians, right? Did the Scythians? Yeah, yes, the Scythians. And, the, and, and it's in, in Africa, actually. There are pipes from Africa. I'm just wondering, but this, generally it's thought that smoking came from the Native American population, and then it, did it move from... No, there was, smoke, there, there was smoking... No, there was the old, smoking... The oldest recorded bong is 5,000 years old. That should answer your question. Where? Yeah. Where? Well, yeah. Well, India. Yeah. 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 It's pretty hard to, to locate pipes around the world. Uh, some of the oldest pipes are from Central Asia for smoking uh, uh, smoking bombs. But usually the form of ingestion up to the 20th century was eating or drinking bombs. And what really made the difference was the 19th, the late 20s and early 30s depression. And